All right, let's jump into our first article, folks, which is the Lightyear One. This is a solar endurance car, super focused on high efficiency. Basically, uh, think about the most optimized electric car so that you can use solar panels on it. Basically, the hope is you'll never have to plug it in and ever charge it again because for folks of us that drive internal combustion engine cars, it's frustrating to go to the gas station. If you're even more impatient than that, plugging in an electric car and waiting for that to charge could be even worse. So they're trying to make a solar car that you can drive around forever, basically. Um, and, you know, I mean, you'll... Uh, you'll end up never having to charge it is their goal you, you just hit every single hot keyword that you possibly could as far as the auto industry is involved so you have my attention uh let's run with it quick note this kind of reminds me did you ever see the fisker karma yes very it seems like they are doing what the fisker karma did but trying to execute it much much better yeah so context for listeners that don't know the fisker karma henrik fisker was an automotive designer that worked for Aston Martin. Then he started his own car company, the first car being the Fisker Karma, and it had a solar panel on the roof. And the idea was that it would charge your electric car or you know provide enough power for you to charge your phone while you're driving. And that was kind of the first solar-powered car, at least that I remember seeing in the market. So kind of a milestone. Well, and we'll, we'll, we'll use the Fisker Karma to kind of parlay it into what we're talking about with the Lightyear One. And that's that the, mo I mean, I guess for most solar cars to try to produce them production today, there's been a lot of challenges. One of them being that you, you need a very low energy consumption car mm -hmm. to be able to fuel it using just solar power because the area on a car isn't that big to produce a lot of solar power. So yeah. if you think about it, when we talk about producing enough solar power, for you to use in your house, you have to cover the entire roof in it. Or if you talk about, you know, enough for a city, you need fields and fields full of solar panels. A car actually doesn't have that much surface area to be covered by solar panels and, uh, you know, get a bunch of sunlight on it. So that's one of the main limitations. And so what Lightyear's doing is, you know, they know that they can't make the car significantly bigger than it already is. I mean, a, a five-seater car is going to be within the same realm of size, no matter what. So what can they do? They can make the car uber, uber efficient. So they're fine tuning every single detail to try and make it as efficient as possible so that they know if they can't increase the amount of solar power they can take in, at least they can minimize the amount of energy they need to consume to make sure the car runs. So what, what, um, what parameters are we talking here? Is it weight reduction? Is it aerodynamics? What is it? All the above. So okay. let, let's dive into it. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing with weight so they're making a really, really light car. They're using composite materials. They're using nice. you know, generative design, I imagine, to optimize where they need weight and where they don't. Um, it is going to be executed in, I imagine, a very cutthroat manner. It's not really focused on being uber luxurious or uber comfortable. Um, they're going to focus on efficiency, and that's their main focus, and other things will come and follow that. So um, one of the main things that I think about here is they – are using a battery that's a little bit more than half the uh, energy capacity of what's in a Tesla Model S. So sure. they basically cut a Model S battery in half. Why would they do that? Well, it's a cheaper car. It's much lighter. I mean, we've talked about this in previous podcast episodes. The battery is actually a lot of the cost and the weight of electric vehicles you know, as a whole. So cutting that down, again, their main focus being efficiency, they can cut that battery in half. Your range is a lot less, but it's also a lot lighter, a lot more efficient. Oh, dude, that's cool. I just I just looked up the battery pack while you were talking. Um, little fun fact. I don't know if you saw this or not, but it looks like uh, the engineers noticed that electric cars burning down was an issue. So they added ports to the battery pack that firefighters can plug into to like cool everything down instead of watch, watching the whole thing burn. That is sick. And I, I didn't see that before, but that's really cool. So th this is... This is pretty interesting because when you're designing an electric car, you're always in a loop, right? Like you want to lower the battery size because that lowers the weight. And if it lowers the weight, you lower the power consumption. If you lower the power consumption, you need a smaller battery. Yeah. So it's this thing that's looping together and they're headed in the right direction. I'm going to throw it back and really show my uh, car nerdiness powers and say that this kind of reminds me of the Volkswagen XL1. Are you familiar with that? I, I only briefly. So you've got, you've got to inform me here, man. All right. So... <laughs> 
Volkswagen came up with this like super efficient car a while ago to flex their engineering muscles. It was made out of composite materials. It was hybrid, so it wasn't fully electric, but it wasn't very luxurious. It had like a bucket seat that you couldn't adjust and it could go like 240 miles on one miles per one. Oh, gallon. this was the this was the one liter car. Yes. Right. It yes, could do yes, yes, 100 yes. kilometers on one liter. Yes. And based on what you've told me so far, it feels like that's what they're that's what light years trying to achieve like the same ethos but with modern technology and advancements that we've had over the past what like 10 years yeah, yeah. and to me it seems like a very well engineered approach they're focusing on making sure that this is feasible i mean if you look at their website they say they're not following principles from the automotive industry they're following first principles from physics. So there's, you know, they're going all the way back to what are the laws that define the universe and they're using those as the building blocks to design their car. So they're saying, you know, how can we reduce the amount of energy we spend and increase the amount of energy that we can generate from the sun? I mean, it's basically like a physics one problem looking at kinetic potential and, you know, and chemical energy and trying to make sure the equation works. And are, are they using you know, parts that other manufacturers have made, or are they like redesigning a lot of this from the ground up themselves to match the, their doing requirements? The vast majority of this from the ground up on okay. their own. Um, and I mean, the main thing here is again, being uber, uber focused on efficiency. Another mm -hmm. one that I want to focus on is they've done a ton of aerodynamic optimization. So they've used computational fluid dynamics with programs like ANSYS to basically do a bunch of different design changes and simulate it in a wind tunnel and use that simulation to validate their design changes at, you know, different temperatures, different pressures, different speeds. And so they've done that kind of iterative design using simulations. And then they ended up building a version of their car, putting it in a wind tunnel and the drag coefficient was less than 0.2. And I don't know for people that don't know drag coefficients that well, Basically, that will be the record for a production car. So oh, wow. they, will, they will break the world record for a mass-produced car in terms of aerodynamic efficiency um, that's bounced around. I think Mercedes has held it a little bit. Um, Tesla held it with their Model S for a little while. Actually, the XL1 up there from Volkswagen is up there. But they're saying Lightyear will have the most aerodynamically efficient five-seater car ever in history. Wow. Okay, so you know we, we've got the all the goodies down. It's lightweight. They've optimized the weight and the aerodynamics as much as they could. But the juicy bit is how well does the solar panel system actually work, right? Because that's that's always been my hesitation with solar powered cars. Like when I looked at Fisker, it was such a cool proposition, but in reality, I don't think it achieved even a fraction of what it wanted to do. Well, again, the main challenge with that is, you know, solar panels are capped at an efficiency of, you know, uh, these days around in the 20% range. What you need is a large area of solar panels to generate enough power to make this thing right. happen. So that's where Lightyear, their other part of their equation comes in. The other half of their secret sauce, I would say, ingredient two in their secret sauce is increasing the s surface area of this vehicle that's covered in solar panels. So... Um, the Tesla Cybertruck has like a tonneau cover that's just over the bed that mm -hmm. has solar panels on it. The Fisker Karma had solar panels just on the roof. Um, and those total to around like two-ish square meters of solar panels spread out over the car. The Lightyear One will have over five square meters of solar panels. They put it on the hood. Okay. They put it on the body. They put it like on the roof. Um, they're basically making every workable part of the surface of the vehicle a way to produce solar energy. And they say, their claim is, that if you drive less than 30 kilometers per day, so that's less than 18 miles per day, you could depend solely on solar charging. So you would never need to take your car to a charging uh -huh. station and plug it in for these short drives. If you have it, you know, you're parking it in the sun, you're driving it in an area where you can get sunlight on it, your car will charge itself in the sun if you drive less than 18, 19 miles a day. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. My, my thing is like right now, my drive to work is 12 miles each way. So I'm just like slightly over that threshold. And, you know, I, I live in the suburbs. So when I park my car, it's out in the sun. But when I go to work where it's like towards the city, 
I actually, there's, there's not, in an urban area, you don't have parkings that are just kind of open. They're usually in a garage. So I feel like that, that might be a hiccup. If, well, if, and if your range they've still good. got this 60 kilowatt hour battery. They've still got the opportunity for you That's to plug point. it in if you need to. Um, I imagine this is, in my mind, we can view this as a very important proof of concept for the technology. Um, you know, we, you know, what what was the EV that GM made EV1, years, and years ago? The electric vehicle. EV1. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was a proof of concept for electric vehicle technology in terms of battery electric vehicles. You know, then we had, you know, people come in like Chevy with the Volt and the Nissan with the Leaf. And now we've come to the point where electric vehicles are becoming ubiquitous. Right. This is a twist on that that I think we will see Lightyear prove and then iterate on. And, you know, less than 18 miles per day, that might not work for everyone. But for a lot of people, they'll be able to completely eliminate plug-in charging. And you know what? As we've been talking about it now, I'm thinking... One of the big things, one of the big issues that people have with electric vehicles is the battery modules, right? Once they get worn out, you got to throw it away. That process of like making new batteries and most times they're not being recycled properly. It's very harsh on the environment. If you do charging through solar panels, the, um, the rate at which you're charging is actually lower than if you did a fast charger. So I think it actually extends the duration of your battery yeah. life, which like... Yeah, that's one thing I didn't mention is like trickle charging is actually one of the healthiest ways to charge a battery. And Lightyear manages to do that using sunlight. So you don't need to take your car and hog the charger at your company parking lot for 12 hours to get it charged. You know, you can p just park your car in the sun and it trickle charges it. It's a healthy way to charge the battery. Um, and it will probably end up in longer battery life, longer life of the car as of, you know, due to that fact as well. Yeah. That's an, like, uh, Right now, when I want to go somewhere on Google Maps or something, it gives you three possible routes, like the fastest, the most eco-friendly or whatever. Imagine if like one day you hop in your Lightyear one and it's like, well, you know, like given the rate at which you can recharge your car with solar panel, maybe this is the best route you can take to trickle charge and get there without wasting too much energy. Um, yeah. I got to say, one thing I'm really impressed with, and this is kind of like a rare thing now in the auto industry, is how much they're doing in-house. Like, yeah. I love what you said about first principles. They saw issues and they're like, we got to address it. So no one else is doing it out there. Great. We're going to do it ourselves. I feel like that, that signals a promising team and a promising vision to me. And I'm excited on how they're going to iterate on this and, you know, really bring an era of solar cars to the masses. Yeah. Well, they recently got a manufacturing partner. They're going to start producing cars in early 2022. So, you know, it is not a far off reality. Everyone, Keep your eyes peeled. Click on the link in our show notes to look at what the Lightyear One looks like. It's not a far off reality to see one of these cars on the road near you soon. And you know what? Uh, one thing I want to note is that solar cars, there's a lot of interest in it. We see it in academia. We see it in industry. There's competitions held every single year for students to flex their muscles of stuff they've learned in the classroom and how to improve this technology bit by bit. So there's interest and there is advancements happening on a year to year basis. Yeah, it's it's uh it's an exciting thing. I think uh our friends at Weevolver should also be proud of Lightyear. Um they're also a Netherlands based company, so that's oh, really? exciting as well. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. 